This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. Persona 4 Arena Ultimate. Hello everybody, and welcome to a brand new series on my channel, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Now if you're wondering why I'm not going to my save file, it's because I have already beaten the story on my save file, so we're going to do the story without the save file, of course, just straight through. Um, also, uh, one thing now, I know I have like five other series going on right now, but I actually really wanted to do this. I took a day off yesterday off of Harvest Moon Death and a lot of other stuff just to play this. Uh, so, I'm actually gonna have a, for the next few days, uh, I'm gonna have a lot of more Persona 4 Ultimax stuff out, or, you know, Ultimax, because I reordered this game, I got all the extra stuff, and I'm really excited to play it. So, this game story actually works much differently, much more different than you would imagine, so, uh, there's different paths depending on who you're playing as, and, of course, this is the main path, so, um, we're gonna be doing all of the story, so let's get straight into it, uh, right at the start here. A lot of this game is dialogue, may I warn you. So, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> you will not require our assistance. Is that correct? Very well. In that case, there is nothing more to be said. As for your presence here, this room is ordinarily only accessible to those bound by a contract. You are fated to refine your power. You will most definitely require our assistance, eventually. Until we meet again, farewell. I have it set to auto-speak whenever they're speaking. Uh, so it's easier on me. <laughs> most intriguing. Are you certain about this? Our domain is indivisible from the destiny of our guests. Nothing meaningless happens in this room, which can only mean that the fate of our visitor just now will be... Uh, Margaret? Pardon. I spoke out of turn. We are only allowed oh, to... Oh, quick note. Um, this story actually spoils, uh, like, a good contract. chunk of Persona Indeed. 3. I, since I've already played the story, and all the spoilers that they had mentioned, I was already spoiled of. Uh, so if you do not want to watch this series... Oh, if you don't want the spoiler, I suggest maybe you don't watch me play the story and just watch, um, watch me do the whole, uh, arcade mode stuff. Um, it's actually a good game. I suggest you go get Persona 3 and beat it, get Persona 4 and beat it, and then get this game. Or get the original Persona 4 Arena, and then Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. Uh, because Persona 4 Arena was actually the first of the game series of Persona 4 Arena series, right? There's only two, Persona 4 Arena, Persona 4 Arena Ultimax, which is the end of the whole thing. Uh... Let me read this. Um, it's May 5th, the day we saw Labyrinth and the Shadow Opera is off. We're in the corner of the chao of the chaotic as usual Juness food court. I had a hunch this was gonna happen. Well, your hunch isn't getting us anywhere. What are we supposed to do? There's not a single open seat. That's just how it goes at Juness during Golden yep. Week. And on Children's Day at that. If it wasn't this busy, we'd be out of business by now. Today's Children's Day? What? I should have brought no. Well, 
that's what you're worried about? Watching the kids run around, I think back to Nanako's face when I told her I'd be going out. She looked like she wanted to say something. I feel bad not that I didn't ask her about it. But given what <clears throat> we came to talk about, I couldn't take her with me. I wonder if she's watching TV alone now like she usually does. Yo, Senpai! I got us some seats. Yeah, so, uh, reminder, like I was saying before, Persona 3 spoilers, Persona 4 and Rena spoilers, and Persona 4 spoilers, so if you don't want to do that, I suggest you don't. Uh, Nico B played of all of Persona Golden, Persona 4 Golden, go check that out. I, right now, am playing Persona 3 Fez, you can check that out. Ooh, good job, Kanji. That's pretty impressive, Kanji, especially for Love. you. Damn it, Ted, leave the especially for you part out next time. All right, break it up. No fighting, guys. Let's go, Yukun. Right. Yeah. With Yukiko spurring us on, we moved to the, uh, to the seats Kanji saved. There's a table four with six chairs we found somewhere. After waiting for everyone to be seated, Yosuke clears his throat as if, drive, as if to drive away all the noise. Uh, <coughs> so it's a great day out and, uh... Dude, I don't think this is the time for that. Well, how else should I start off? Look at the size of this crowd. I'd say I made the right call showing up like this. If I came in my usual costume, Sorry, I'm doing that just to check if I miss anything. Be swarming my adorable See, I, I can show up the uh, previous mine. dialogue if I miss anything, so... Oh, but anything happens is right there. The children tear off your fur from time to time. Wow! Are you being nice to me, Yuki-chan? Has our love finally blossomed? Huh? Of course it has. Wow! Been. Shot down <sighs> as always. It's because you never learn. <laughs> well, let's get down to business. Well, we didn't get to talk much yesterday, after all. I nod to Chie. We gathered here yesterday after seeing Labrys off, but there wasn't time to calm down about what happened. In the end, we agreed to leave the details for tomorrow, which is now today. Don't worry about the crowd. Let's start the investigation team meeting anyway. Yeah, though we are missing two people. It's just not the same without our full roster of pretty girls. Oh, not only Risei-chan, but now chan couldn't be here either. Well, it's not like the other day, where we just lost contact with Risei. Mm-hmm. She seems really busy. Well, she's got work, I assume. She said she had work during the holidays, too. At least we got to talk to her yesterday. Yeah, well, she's an idol, right? Yeah, And now Cho's a detective, so obviously she's busy. I same old for them. Naruto-kun knew things about what happened that not even we did. Apparently, she knew about Mitsuru-san and her friends from the start. Thanks to her, though, we got some good information. Well then, let's get everyone up to speed on what happened using that info. Yosuke's right. So much has happened these past few days that none of us ha have a good grasp on it all. We need to sort things what we sort things through about what we've what learned again. What started it all? Midnight Channel again, I guess. I thought I was dreaming for a good chunk of it, so it's not really hitting me. The Midnight Channel, that TV world we helped restore peace in, and ended up being used by someone in that in the Labrys incident. Labrys is the fifth generation anti-shadow suppression weapon. A girl with a mecha mechanical body who was stolen from the Kirijo group, one of Japan's biggest con conglor conglorinerates. Wait, I know there's a right way to say this. Conglorinerates. I know there's a... I'm pretty sure that's not the right way. Conglor... Conglorinerates. Conglor... No, there's a right way to say that. I'm just gonna pretend I don't even know, because I don't know big words. Some someone threw her into the TV world, but facing but Labis faced her other suppressed self there, and by by accepting it, she awoke to her persona. That most that mostly wrapped things up. However, so who exactly was it that put Labris inside the TV, and why? At first, I thought the culprit was jealous of my popularity and tried to break us friends up. Mm hmm. But that wasn't it. Their goal was to disrupt our hearts by making us fight each other, and then steal our personas after they return to being shadows. Naruto said as much too. I don't know. Turning them back to shadows and stealing them. That doesn't sound like something just anyone could pull off. Maybe not. But we know for certain that the culprit was using that method to try and gather powerful shadows. <laughs> Gathering <clears throat> shadows, huh? That's definitely not something any normal person would do. The atmosphere darkens after Yosuke's remark. During the silence, I recall the events leading up to yesterday. We had, we had once entered the TV world to, to figure out why the Midnight Channel is broadcast again. 
What we found there was a strange fighting tournament called the P1 Grand Prix. At the heart of it all was Lapras. Having gone through several trials as a weapon with her heart, she gave birth to her shadow, a suppressed version of herself, which was to the dream, her dream of wanting to be a normal high school girl. It all resulted in the P1 Grand Prix designed to pit people against their friends. After we entered the TV, we got wrapped up in a battle just like Labyrinth Shadow planned, and we were forced to fight one another. But we also met up with a, a mem with member. We also met members of a mysterious organization known as the Shadow Operatives, who were in search of Labyrinth and their leader Mitsuru Kirijo, who's CEO of the Kirijo Group. It was help. It was with their help that we conquered the tournament. They were using the power of personas before we were. It was reassuring in a way to meet people who deal with shadows day in day out. But the case isn't over yet. We couldn't find out why the culprit put Labyrinth in the TV to begin with. We don't even know who did it. Mitsuru-san and her people seem to have some idea. That doesn't mean we can ignore what happened in our town. So we made the decision to investigate the case on our own, too. That reminds me. How are things inside the TV? The thought suddenly crosses my mind, so I asked Teddy. After we settled the first case, the TV world turned into a beautiful place. But it wasn't that way anymore during the P1 Grand Prix. I wonder what happened out there after Lab we saved Labyrinth. Still the same. It should go back to normal eventually. But the P1 Grand Prix had such an effect that it's still noisy there. Oh. Huh? But what? Quit mumbling and just spit it out. It's hard to say for sure, but I sense these weird presences. They feel kind of like shadows, but not really. Not really. Weird presences? You mean there's something strange in there? Um, I don't really know. What could it be? The culprit, maybe? Maybe, but maybe not. We all look at each other after hearing Teddy's evasive answer. If something's in the TV world, it can only be a shadow, someone besides us who knows about that world, or someone who can use a persona. Huh? How would that make sense? The culprit wasn't a persona user, right? Hmm. He did say that he used Labrys because he couldn't enter the TV world himself. True. That's right, the only people who can enter the TV world are Persona users. For a normal person to get in, they would have to, to enter alongside a Persona user. If someone who doesn't have a Persona falls in, for whatever reason, they're in serious danger. Either the shadows already dwelling there on their own, uh, or their own shadow might end up killing them. So, wouldn't that mean this weird thing Ted's talking about can't be our bad guy? I guess. Or maybe the culprit can shove people into a TV even though he's not a Persona user. I can understand Kanji's doubts, but unfortunately we don't have enough information right now to say either way. There's one more thing that bothers me. What is it? It's something Naoto said. I tell everyone about, uh, tell everyone Naoto left me with yesterday. She said that when Mitsuru's plane was hijacked as a diversion from Labrys' kidnapping, the hijackers had no memory of their actions. They may have been brainwashed or hypnotized, but either way, it couldn't have been done by a normal person. <sighs> so much we don't know. Mm -hmm. But no matter what the culprit was trying to do, if he was after us in the TV world, I doubt this case will wrap itself up. Mm-hmm. I agree. Oh, then does that mean? <laughs> Too bad for Mitsuru-san, but we're gonna ignore her request not to get involved. Mitsuru-san and her people left. They told us not to get involved any further with this case. We knew that why she said that, of course. They were worried about our safety, still. Ah, so the investigation team's back in business. Yep. Busan, but we can't just leave the I team. don't feel bad. We can fight too. And I don't give a fuck. Now, so it's practically our duty to do this. I'm in too. After all, I am Labby Chan's knight. Plus, I can't sit on the sidelines after seeing what this culprit did to my world. It had gotten so peaceful thanks to you guys. Sorry guys, I'm not paying too much attention. My phone fell. Ugh, there you are. I knew the, uh, they felt this way. I nod firmly after What's seeing everyone in, else in, in agreement. Mm -hmm. We have to return the favor of getting stuck with those strange epithets too. Everyone looks away briefly after hearing this. Those nonsense nicknames that got broadcast during the P1 Grand Prix made no small stir, made no small stir in our daily lives. Although personally, so mad. What was that carnivore whose discarded womanhood stuff all about? I could swear people cross the street now when they see me. 
Wow. Really? I was actually pretty impressed. Huh? Is that how you think of me, you could? No, that's not what I meant. Love. That reminds me. You seem to like that sister complex kingpin of steel nickname. Did he? Love. Sensei, have you awakened to a new name? Should I call you Kingpin from now on? Oh my god. I wonder if it's just my imagination that, that what Yosuke just said just now hurt worse than the nickname. All I meant was those nicknames weren't that bad. Still, I admit, I was honestly impressed at how precise each of those taunts were uh, in striking at each other of our of our sure hang-ups. Some golden week. And after you took the time to come see us, too. No kidding. Shit got stirred up the day you came back. Like someone planned it that way. Everyone nods at Kanji's words, everyone except Yosuke. Unlike the others, he just shoots me a slightly bleak glance. I know what it means, but I'll let him that say it. That actually does still bother me a bit. What do you mean? Oh, uh, I guess the timing? It's like whoever did this was waiting for you to come back. I agree with him. The incident with Lavras happened right after, uh, uh, right when I returned to Inaba for Golden Week. It was t timed as if whoever set this up was just well, waiting for me to get back no in town. To this, about that the, these like words are oh, so yeah, bad, especially when they're thoughts, because they're like so up. She's oh, they're mentioning Marie. Always. It looked like she was buying something at Sozai Daigaku the other day. Okay, so if you guys don't know, Marie is an exclusive character to Persona 4 Golden uh, because um, Golden is the remake of Persona 4 made for PS Vita. And if you actually don't know, she doesn't show up in Persona 4 Arena, but shows up in Golden uh, in uh, this one. Uh, here's the thing. People think that Persona 4 is the canon one and that Golden is not the canon one in reality. Uh, but in reality, since they mention it here in this game and she shows up in Persona Q and the person who makes who made the Persona games had mentioned that uh, Marie is, uh, well, not exactly Marie, but uh, Persona Q and Persona 4 Arena Ultimax are all canon games. That makes it so that Persona 4 Golden was the canon one, not Persona 4. Not to mention they mentioned some extra stuff that sh happened during Persona 4 Golden in this game that make it canon as well. What? Nobody told Emmy Chan So it just proves that Persona 4 Golden is the canon one in reality. Well, it is Marie Chan we're talking about. I'm sure she's noticed that Yukun's back. Marie, she was another one involved in the first case I've solved here in Inaba. We helped her regain her lost memories, and she now protects this town as a minor goddess who supports the townspeople here. Uh, why hasn't she shown up? I mean, if she knew that Senpai's back, you'd think she'd be the first to show. Oh, fuck. Where did that lightning come from all of a sudden? Oh, look at those insane rain clouds. It's gonna start pouring soon for sure. Yeah, man. That's when I, uh, that's when I noticed that thick crowd of customers uh, here had... That's when I noticed that the thick crowd of customers here has gone pretty sparse. Or has gone pretty sparse. As if uh, following the families running back inside, Jeez, we also get up from our seats. Lately. Man, legit, these fucking words and thoughts are horrible. Oh, sorry, that's my... Can't read half of it. Hello? Oh, Kasa-san. We move away from Yukiko oh, a little to give her some space to talk. Is a robot, right? Would she rust if she got caught out in the rain? Nah, I doubt it. The Kirijo group developed her after all, and they wouldn't be that cheap. Michan's group sure is amazing. Her stuff is way better than Juness brand electronics. Shut up. Wow! But don't go dissing your own employer. As Yosuke and Teddy snipe at each other, Chie gazes up to this cloudy sky. When she notices me looking at her, she shakes her head, Last telling me not to worry. Suzu-san and her friends, right? I wonder how she's doing. At the P1 Grand Prix, Lab has joined Mitsuzu-san's shadow cooperatives since she has a persona now. Even as we speak, she and her companions are probably chasing the culprit who threw her into sure the TV. If all goes well, we'll see her again in no time. Yeah, since we made our decision to stick, uh, pick, uh, to stick our our noise, noses into the case, that means we're the same. Uh, that we're after the same thing. Lavis and the Shatter Operatives are. It seems outside we might meet up with Lavis again somewhere soon. Oh, it seems possible. What the fuck? 
Then again, we're doing this without Mr. Serious Hunt's permission, so I can't say I'm yeah, eager to run into them. <laughs> I should stop being such a worry wart. <laughs> hey, looks like Yukiko Senpai's off the phone. Oh, welcome back, Yukiko. What was the call about? It was the end. It seems a group of our guests is still out. We didn't have any umbrellas ready for them, so I think a lot of them will come back drenched. Sorry, I have to go back for a bit. Oh, right. I forgot this is a busy time for the Amagi Inn, too. Actually, mm -hmm. shouldn't we be heading home ourselves? Oh, if this keeps up, I bet it'll keep raining into the night. Raining, huh? That thing's not gonna come on again, is it? Everyone turns around at Yosuke's words. He says that thing, but we all know what he means. He's talking about the Midnight Channel, which came at midnight on a rainy night. Came on. At a, oh my god. The weather was just like this during the incident with Labras, too. As if to break the silence, we hear another roll of thunder closer than the one a moment ago. In any case, let's meet up again tomorrow to check up on the TV world. Okay, I'll see you all here tomorrow. And I'll make sure to let Risechan know, too. I'll call up Nato kun Though I don't know yet if she'll be able to make it. Cool deal. Well, see you guys tomorrow. We hastily end the investigation team meeting before it starts raining. As I see Yosuke starting starting to leave after everyone else, I ask him about the issue he raised earlier. About the timing of all of this. Hmm? Oh, that. I don't know. I might be overthinking this, but if the culprit happens to know you, would that give some hint of who it might be? It was an understandable question, but I can't help but look at uh, askance at him. Is that does that really say askance? Askance at him. If the culprit had investigated me, of course he'd know something about me, but not my but not my plan to stay in Idaba during the Golden Week. It'd have to be a person who knows me, plus knew that I was coming here during the break. Is there Isn't anyone who so knows all that? Adachi? Adachi-san? Ooh. This time I'm caught completely off guard, and all I can do is dully repeat the question. Toru Adachi, the man who was arrested, who was arrested in the Midnight Channel murders. Wow. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that freaking sentence was very structured properly. He should be in police custody now, which is ironic since he used to work for my uncle as a police detective at Inaba Station. We do have quite the history, so obviously he knows about me, and I can't quite rule out the. the I could just read it like this. Uh, we do have quite a history, so obviously he knows about me, and I can't rule out uh, Dojima-san might have told Adachi about my no, vacation plans. He has a persona. Oh, yeah, good point. Sorry, I wasn't trying to weird you out. Yosuke's tone is apologetic, and he scratches his head. But really, I should be the one apologizing. I just, I didn't just deny that it could be Adachi-san because he's a persona user. The real reason is that, deep down, I trusted what Adachi said about abiding by the rules of this world. That's something he only mentions in Golden as well. Uh -huh. But it's not him, then who? But if it's not him, then who? The great clouds filled the sky over our heads, mirroring the confused anxiety we shared. Great. Nanako! 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 Do we get to see Nanako? Yeah! Make sure to raise my hand to answer all the teacher's questions. Nanako, you told that story three times already. No, I didn't. Lol. Nanako, who had been talking nonstop through dinner, sulks at Do Dojima-san pointing that out. Whether or not she'll admit it, though, I've definitely heard that story several times. Either parent day visiting day made her that happy, or she was looking for any excuse to prolong our conversation. Well... Which, whichever it is, Nanako seems happy, oh, so I don't mind what? much. I saw a really long car yesterday. A really long car? That rings a bell. She must be talking about the extravagant black limousine that Mitsuru-san and her shadow operatives oh, you mean the, drove the in. Was driving on. Around town? Yeah, I heard about that. A big stretch limo in a sleepy little town like ours. I'll tell you one thing. They won't be from around here. Probably. Dojima-san shoots me a glance while responding to Nanako's co comment. He's a detective through and through. I think he's noticed something's up. Sure enough, after Dojima sends Nanako to sit to the sink with the empty so, dishes, he gets right down to business. Up to this time. Oh fuck! There's no hiding anything from that piercing gaze. He has to know that we came in contact with Masuru-san's people. They were so dis 
d dignified seeming that I hoped even their uh, uh, outrageously long limo wouldn't stand out here, but I find myself actually uh, relieved to be mistaken. Back, a detective from the Metropolitan Police Department suddenly rang me up to ask about the details of that case. Not only that, but I saw that Shiragane kid at the station several times these past couple of days. Was this all just a coincidence? That's... Uh, Can't answer, huh? Well, that's fine. Tojima-san gives a deep sigh and closes his eyes. That's odd. Normally, he'd grill me for information and yell at me while doing it. Look, I trust you, but this is different. Don't stick your head into the lion's den. You do understand that I'm a detective and pretty much your guardian while you're here, right? I know, Dajima-san. His strict yet honest gaze asked me to promise that much in, in, in return for not probing me further. I say yes, but in my mind I'm apologizing at the same time. We're heading into dangerous waters, but it's the same as uh, as the situation when I lived here. So we have to be the ones to do this. Then do whatever you want. Aw, oh, yeah, nice. I can't help but smile at seeing Dojima's look, do, look away so, inside. Dojima, see, <clears throat> I can't... Oh god, my smiling. My smiling. My freaking reading. I can't help but smile at seeing Dojima-san look away inside. I'm sure that he has a million questions about everything I'm doing, but hey, he's not asking them because he trusts me. Bro again, Dad. Lol. Oh, no, not at all. We were just talking. Really, big bro? Yeah, there's nothing to worry about. Um, I'll always be on your side, okay? Lol. Dojima. <laughs> when I ask her, I, when I answer with a smile, Nanako looks at me with a worried expression, but her reply is earnest. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Dojima-san looking uncomfortable, and I can't help but laugh again. Lol. Back in my room, which is all gonna be me thinking to myself. Uh, let's wait till it stops. Uh, or it's done enough. When I return to my room, I can hear the faint rumble of thunder in the distance. The rain that was pouring down this evening has already stopped. If the pattern holds, the midnight channel should stay quiet as long as it's not raining. Realizing the, that raises some complex feelings in me. I have to go back home tomorrow. And as much as I hope nothing happens, I want to resolve this mystery while I'm still here. But wishing to solve this case mean, means wishing for something to Make happen. Up your mind, you. I inadvertently glance towards the TV screen reflecting service and catch myself with an odd smile on my face. Just a little longer until midnight. I don't have it. I check the time, and the moment I look at the TV, the screen suddenly turns on. Cutscene. The strong win while the weak disappear. Tonight. We will witness the hottest battles in all history. The goddess of victory is waiting to descend upon the ring. P1 fans, are you ready? Are you ready? Time to let loose and all out war! It's funny how he cuts the, the moon arcana card when he's not even the moon. For another tournament. Right on the heels of the last one! These warriors will create another legend here at the world shattering P1 Ring! These are battles of honor, battles of will. Sparks will fly! Some fight for pride, some fight for glory! Will this be decided by pure muscle, or will a battle of wits determine the outcome? Oh shit, flowers. Things are heating up! Lol. Tonight, who will win the title of champion? Who will be crowned with the winner's wreath? Whose tale of glory will resound for generations? All that remains are the dreams of the warriors. As the Grand Prix plunges into its final chapter, the P1 Climax is... Barely getting started! Oh, shit. Hello? Hey! Phone died. Oh! Power died. Oh! Every- everyone's power- What? 
What the fuck? Huh? Stupid. What's going on? What are you doing here? What the fuck? What in the world? You the could eat and Labyrinth. But you could eat Red Fog? What the fuck? Yo, what the fuck is that? Is it the CN Tower? Do they have that in Japan? I didn't know they had one in Japan. What the The DV shows a familiar classroom. If I remember correct, right, that's the announcement room at the school lab is created inside the TV world using the Grand P1 Grand Prix. Standing in that announcing room is General Teddy, actually, just his head, shorting away. <laughs> the P1 Climax! It's the end of the world! One-on-one -on -one deathmatch that's worthy of the name Climax! And best of all, if you don't win the one-on-one -on -one tournament to the finish within the hour, the world will end! No punches pulled this time! I'll make, make myself clear, clear so, so that no, no one misunderstands. This will not be taking place within the TV world. It will, in fact, take place in the reality which you occupy. Enjoy it while you can. Alrighty then! Time to show off how that special stage is going! Holy shit! Holy shit! I guess Akihiko, Mitsuru, and Fuka? Why Fuka though? She doesn't do shit. She's already like fucking sickly. She hasn't even showed up in Persona 3 yet, and I already know what the fuck her fucking personality is. Oh my god. Our captured queen and her loyal minions. Then again, if we don't have a champion, everyone's a goner anyway. So she'll be in good company. Best of oh my god. The display cuts off abruptly and the TV becomes a silent box. Realizing that a strange red light is filling the once dark room, I dash towards the window. The town outside is covered in an eerie red what fog. What is that? I don't know, you could. The streetlights are off and I don't sense anyone's presence. That hazy light illuminating the town is the red fog. It's the red fog? Seeing the town in such an obviously abnormal state snaps me back into my senses and I quickly look back into my room. Nanako! Dojima-san! No one answers. I rush down the stairs and check all the rooms, but no matter how I look, hard I look, the two who live here are nowhere to be found. What in the world's going on here? The P1 climax? Aren't Mitsuru-san and her people are are Mitsuru-san and her people really captives? And worst of all, if this isn't the this isn't the TV world, is this really still the real world? So what's happened to the townspeople? A wave of confusion and fear crashes over me as I sort through the information at hand. My cell phone won't ever even turn on. It's like it's suddenly broken. It's happening again. Court. That's right, whenever we had a case, that's where we'd always gather. If Yosuke, Chie, and Yukiko notice this too, then they'll definitely be headed there. Teddy should be with Yosuke, so there's no need to worry about him. Kanji, though, he might, straight, he might head straight into the TV. I chuckle to myself at the thought, a rare moment of honor humor in this looming crisis. I know where I needed to be, so I quickly prepared myself. Whenever we needed to fight, I was always clad in my Yasugami High uniform to think that I'd be wearing it again so soon. With a sense of... Uh, trepidation that I open the door uh, the I open the front door and then I'm pretty sure to be continued where is it it's coming yeah there it is alrighty that was a long story thing okay so I'm gonna end uh, this here for now uh, in the next episode we're gonna continue on to either Naoto or Rise depending on who I, uh, how I feel uh, but they're all really more story explanations. So, see you guys in a uh, little bit. Scott from Rough Maybe. I'll see you guys next time.